Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. So Preview is no Photoshop, but it is free and it does come on all of your Mac devices. So it's good to take advantage of some of its cool features. And I actually didn't know about some of these photo editing features that I'm about to show you until pretty recently. So let's go over them for some quick and dirty edits for photos using Preview on the Mac. And they're actually pretty good. So starting out with number one, if you want to remove a background from an image and turn it into a PNG, you know, transparent background image, or you want to duplicate a certain part of an image or any type of selection like that, Apple does include the instant alpha tool that you can use in the markup toolbar. And you click the instant alpha, and then you drag on a color and it will turn that reddish pink and make a selection. Now you can drag it kind of up and down or right and left depending on the colors in the scene and you can see that it makes a selection. So if I want all the blue and of course this will work best with a solid color background and a clear differentiation between your subject and your background. So I can drag and you can see everything is pink and I can adjust to see how much more do I want to be included. So how much of the bird do I want included so you see a little bit of the blue popping through and I can be good here. So now I've made a selection of everything except the bird in the sky. So now, of course, I can remove the background just by clicking Backspace. And it'll ask me if I want to convert this into a PNG file, which I do. So now I have a PNG file, so if I were to export this, I could put it over another image, and it would be a nice background-free image. I'm going to undo that. So if I do the selection again, and instead, this time, I actually want to copy the bird. So I want to go over to edit and then inverse selection. And now it's just the bird selected. So if I want to do command C and command V, I have another bird. And if I want to do that again, I can. And I can select the bird and I can resize it and drag it around. So now I've got a whole whole flock of, of birds in this image. Now what's cool about this is that these aren't really layers like it doesn't really act as a layer you can't really reorder the layers but what you can do is command i to pull up inspector and this will give you um, all of the layers essentially and you can click on them for just identifying them more easily but then you can also delete them right from this view so it doesn't give you too many options but you can see all of the different layers so to speak here um, you can't undo a deleting of a layer so if i want to get another one of these i have to copy and paste it again now there's also other selection tools to the left of the instant alpha tool over here. And so the first one is a rectangular selection, which is pretty simple rectangular tool. And you can, of course, copy and paste just rectangles. You also have the elliptical selection, which is basically the same thing. And you can adjust the dimensions. And with both of these tools, you can hold down the shift button to make it a perfect square or circle. As you can see there. So if I just want to take this little circle and you know, bring it over to the corner for whatever reason, I can do that. So get rid of that. There's also the lasso selection, which isn't super useful, but you can kind of just trace things and get like a really rough uh, sketch. So if I just want this wing, I can copy and paste that. Now I just have an extra wing over here. And then finally, there's the smart lasso tool, which is basically just a little bit better version of the lasso. So you basically drag it over what you want to select and it will try its best to give you a good selection. It's not that good. Um, it's not great, as you can see, pretty rough, but you can still somewhat do that. Now, what's also cool about when you're editing a photo like this is that you can copy and paste other things and other PNG images right into this. So say I want there to be a whale in this image, I can copy this from Google and then paste in a nice little whale right into my sky. So I've got some birds and a whale and that's looking pretty good. And then you can see it again pops up in here. So the next tool is a mask and it's not exactly like a Photoshop mask because it's actually much simpler than that. So if you go to tools and annotate and you can select a mask. Now a mask basically darkens the perimeter and keeps the area untouched. So it's a good tool for emphasis and not too much more. So you can see the mask over here and you can resize it and move it around and stuff like that. Now you can change the color of the perimeter. So if you wanted to really emphasize, you can do that. And you can see the different options there. Or you can make it translucent, which is the no fill color. And that will just kind of give it a grayed out background. So this is a good tool just for emphasizing a subject or creating a nice little frame. So it's good to have. 
And then finally, the last tool is a loop tool. So again, if you go into tools, annotate, and loop, or you can also go into the shape tool, and then the one on the very bottom is the loop tool. And these are basically just little magnifying glasses named after like a loop glass um, that you can resize the size of it using the blue circle. And then you can resize the intensity of the zoom using the green one. So this isn't a very high quality bird, but maybe we'll just move it over to the whale. Uh, it's looking kind of grumpy. If you want to emphasize that grumpiness, we can zoom in there and show that off. So that's kind of what this is for. You can add as many loops as you want, whereas the zoom tool, you can only use one zoom. And with these, what's nice is that you can also change the perimeter. So whether I want it to be dotted um, or solid, and I can change the fill as well. So I'll make it yellow, we'll make it dotted again. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that's good to have. And you can also double them up for a really interesting effect. And of course, also in the annotation options, you can add a speech bubble or text. So this is just another way of adding a little bit of an effect to your window. So if I want to give this bird something to say, I can give it the speech bubble. And again, I can change the fill and the perimeter. Um, and then I can add some text inside there as well. So there is a really interesting, but honestly kind of effective method of editing pictures on your Mac and creating some great PNG images. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.